If you have never heard of Yellow House or the band Grizzly Bear, you're doing yourself a great disservice, as this band has made some of the most interesting and beautiful music during their time together as a band, and my personal favorite album of all time, 2006's Yellow House. Yellow House is beautiful. It's described as a blend of folk rock, experimental, indie rock, indie pop, and psychedelic music. And it's just that. In today's video, I want to talk about the album, giving you some context on its creation and a general overview of the album. So this won't be a crazy, in-depth analysis, but hopefully, I can persuade you to give it a listen, or if you're already a fan, give you some information about the album that you might not have known. Although Yellow House is technically their second album, as the first album under the moniker Grizzly Bear was mostly an Ed Drosty solo album with some help from Chris Bear, it is the first album to feature both Chris Taylor, a multi-instrumentalist and producer, and Daniel Rawson, another multi-instrumentalist and a second vocalist for Grizzly Bear. Both would become permanent additions going forward and would help shape the band into their signature sound. The album was well received by critics and it was only their second album so it allowed the band to gain a little bit of a following, most notably by Johnny Greenwood of Radiohead, who went on to invite the band to be their opening act during the second half of their 2008 American tour, and even called Grizzly Bear his favorite band at the time. So what is it that makes this album so great? Tracks like the opener, Easier, have an atmosphere and feeling that are unlike anything I've ever listened to. It's both comforting and feels like it's pushing me out the door to head on some adventure. The sound is rich and it pulls you in with flutes, strings, piano, and eventually the harmonization of Ed and Daniel. This track is the first introduction of them bouncing off each other with their vocals and co-writing the songs together. Easier's lyrics use the two vocalists to create a narrative, with Rawson singing from one perspective of dealing with issues in a relationship, and Ed singing the other. The first part is only four lines long and ends with him just saying, let it go, as he doesn't see this as a big deal. But in the second stanza, he repeats these lines, with Ed interjecting in between them from the perspective of a separate partner, saying how they feel and how this could just be easier. This kind of bouncing between the two allows you to view the tracks from two different lights, and this carries throughout the album. The second track on the album, Lullaby, is split in half by guitar. The first half is soft and acoustic and contains flutes and these fluttering noises, and about halfway through, a distorted electric guitar disturbs the sound, leaving the droning, fluttering, and flutes and changing the tone entirely. The lyrics, My Love's Another Kind, is repeated in this track. And in an interview with Ed Drosty regarding his sexuality and if it had any influence on the lyrics, he said, I kind of like how vague the lyrics are. Sometimes they're gay, but they're not overt. A lot of the lyrics on Yellow House, Daniel Rawson wrote, and My Love's Another Kind could be interpreted that way, and I think he's very open to that interpretation too, even though he was thinking of it as something else. That's why I relate to it when I sing those lyrics. I think we're all into the vague nature of it which even further drives home that depth of the separate meanings between the two artists. Lyrics are pretty minimal on a lot of these tracks. The songs range from 3 minutes and 43 seconds to 6 minutes and 24 seconds, and a majority of the tracks are around 60 to 70% just instrumental, with the lyrics there to help move the song along. I'm not going to go too in-depth on the lyrics on some of these tracks as I have with other albums that I've covered in the past, as I feel the lyrics aren't really the most important part of the tracks here. By no means is this a bad thing, as the instrumentation is beyond full and complex, and it's what I really enjoy about this album. This is especially true with the track Knife. It comes in at over 5 minutes long and has only about 8 lines of lyrics, or overall 53 words. Yet this track is mesmerizing. With guitar leading and vocal harmonization echoing in the back, it leads into a track sung excellently by Ed Drosty. He chimes in on Genius about what these lyrics mean and said, This is me being the asshole. I'm talking about lying straight to your face, looking in your eyes, lying, cheating, and then stabbing you in the back. People say it's such a romantic song. It's not, really, but I welcome that interpretation. Despite the harsher meaning of the lyrics, the track doesn't feel harsh. It keeps up with the more upbeat tones that the previous tracks had, and this track has an accompanying music video that is, well, quite weird. It's also one of the singles for the album, giving everyone a taste of what the album really contains, which is why if somehow you are hesitant on listening still, check this track out. 
An important track in the listing that has an alternate electric version on the Friend EP is Little Brother. This track continues the album's trend of taking the folk-like music and blending it with psychedelic and experimental values. This track has a much more noticeable glitches and odd ambient noises accompanying it throughout. And these noises are something that I find synonymous with Grizzly Bear's sound. Almost all of their albums and tracks have a little bit of those extra pieces that just further add depth to them. While the main instruments in this track are acoustic guitars and drums and kind of extra synthy and almost creepy and ambient noises that drone on sometimes in the background, it gives the track a different feel, like something's not quite right here. This is especially apparent in the final stretch of the track. For about a minute and a half it dishes the acoustic for droning noises, a distant electric guitar, some low pitch harmony, and sounds of nature. It's sort of unsettling, but at the same time the production of it all is so deep and intricate. All of the songs on this album you can listen to and find new little parts that you didn't hear before. Even I, years after my first listen, have come across little details listening to it for this video that I didn't notice before. This album also has a track named Marla, after Ed Droste's great aunt who tried to make a music career in the late 1930s but ultimately failed, and by the late 40s had drunk herself to death, leaving behind these recordings. They were eventually given to Ed Droste and he digitized them. You can actually listen to her original recording which can be found on YouTube. But for the Grizzly Bear version, they decided to make it a uh, track as sort of a tribute to her. They kept the same lyrics, but slowed it down, made the instrumentals much more dramatic. It's by far the most haunting track on the album, mostly because it is a ghost. It's a left-behind track from a failed career of a person who's no longer with us. Yet it's an amazing song, and I think the context only further adds to it. When asked about the theme of the album overall, Chris Taylor said that there really isn't one lyrically with the album, but the real theme was the band learning to work together. And I think the track that shows the sort of end result of that is the track On a Neck on a Spit, as it's probably the song that has the most yellow housey feel, or at least the song that has the most yellow house DNA in it. It's a wild ride throughout, and I think it really shows off what the band all together can accomplish. It features both Ed and Daniel singing together, Rawson on guitar being amazing as always, Taylor on bass, and Chris Bear going absolutely crazy on the drums. Like, seriously, he is insanely good. On top of all of this, they're all helping with harmonization. I've watched countless live performances of this track, and every time I'm blown away by how much they're able to accomplish. Another thing that I've always loved about Grizzly Bear is how impactful their closer tracks are and Yellow House by far has one of the best. The final track on this album, Colorado, also shows how their collaborative efforts can come together to make something dark and depressing. The track, according to Ed, is about Ed's brief time living in Colorado in the 90s with his family. He was only 12 and going through puberty and felt alone for being stuck in a place that he didn't really know anyone. The real emotion behind the track lies behind those feelings of abandonment and loneliness. There are very, very few lyrics on this song, and without counting repeated words, there's maybe a total of 20. But the low amount of lyrics emphasizes that lonely feeling. I would love to dissect every little bit of each of these tracks, but there's just so much that I'd never really know where to end. I know I didn't cover every track, but trust me, they are all amazing. And there really isn't any bad songs on this album. If I haven't convinced you to take a listen, then I'm sorry for wasting your time. But if I did, or if you are interested, please do. It's seriously such a beautiful and rich album that I barely ever see get talked about. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been Stump. See ya.